Welcome back everyone to another ContraBIM tutorial. Today's subject is all about the renovation filter, which is a powerful tool that we can use to assign model elements to their construction status, whether they are existing, to be demolished, or new. So it's a pretty basic function and really easy to use this tool. Uh, simply we assign the elements to their status and then they show up depending on which renovation filter we select. We can actually go beyond these kind of basic settings though and we can create design options with this renovation tool as well. So that's really the subject of this video. Uh, we'll cover the uh, kind of the default settings of the renovation tool and then I'll show you how we can create some design options so you can present different uh, designs to your clients early on and kind of flip through these very quickly, make adjustments and control the visibility all with the renovation tool. So, all right, let's jump over to a quick example here. And I just have a few little placed walls here. So let's pick up the settings of an ex exterior wall. Let's model this in just like a quick shape. I do want to point out, uh, this is the palette right here that pulled up. Um, and whatever default status is assigned here, which one, whichever one we select, it's going to assign those to our model elements. So the other thing I want to point out is that we have this option over here, which is pinning or unpinning. So in most cases, uh, when you're modeling with new or existing or to be demolished, uh, we really want to leave this unpinned. We'll show what that pinning does here in a minute. So, all right, let's go in and we will simply just kind of create a little box. We'll pick up our interior wall. We're still on our existing status. So let's just draw in a few walls here. So we'll just kind of create some basic shapes. And okay, so everything is currently existing. So when we go to our existing plan, we don't see really any changes. Let's go to our demolition plan. So let's say, for example, we want to just demolition these two walls. So let's assign those to the demolition plan. And you'll see that that is now changed to yellow in this case. So those are being overridden because of their renovation status. Let's go to after demolition. So of course, we can see those have been removed. Our change plan is going to show essentially everything, our demolition plan, as well as our new elements. So let's model in a few new elements. I'm going to assign our default elements to the status and we can simply just model our new location. So we can now see both the demo and the new. And then we go to our new construction, which will hide the demo and our plan status, which just shows the final status here. One thing to note that's kind of interesting is if we look at this intersection here, when we go between these two plans, you can see how these walls are either intersecting or not intersecting. And so we can control that within our renovation filters as well. Let's jump into these and take a quick look at how these function. So obviously we have a listing of our different filters. You can see the nice preview here on the right of what is being shown, what is being overridden or what is hidden. So as you click through these, you can see we have lots of different options. Down here at the bottom, we also have different elements and features we can control the visibility on as well, whether we want to show, you know, opening markers or symbols. Uh, we have this do not intersect option down here, which is one that, um, that will control that whether elements are going to merge like that scenario of the wall we were just looking at here. Um, so that's how you can control those settings. Pretty easy to use. We have that for existing as well as for the demo elements. And so, yeah, within this structure here, let's go to our plan status, which is really like our final view of our design in this case. And let's create a few options for this so that we can show maybe three different variations. So we can create a new filter simply by duplicating. And I'm going to call this one option one, obviously. Let's duplicate that twice so that we have three different options. Okay, and we'll start with our option one here. So let's hit okay. Uh, so right now, what we currently are seeing is, it's essentially the same thing as our plan status because we are showing our existing elements and our new elements here. So just for the sake of simplicity here, I'm actually going to select this other wall. We're going to demolish that too. Let's go to our new construction or uh, we're going to essentially demolish everything. So if we look at our demo plan, 
let's see, we just have a lot of walls that are all being demolished now. So we're just clearing the way for some of these design options. So let's go to option one now. So we're only seeing the existing and our new elements. So let's change our default elements to new. We will pick up our interior wall here and we are simply just going to model in something that tells us what phase we are currently on. So in this case, let's just create a nice little one there in the middle. So, all right, we have option one. So in order to assign these walls to represent our option, we just simply pin them there. So uh, now when we go to any other phase here, doesn't matter which one it is, it's always going to hide whatever elements are pinned to this option. So that's really the main control here. That toggles uh, when these get displayed, and they only get displayed in this case when they're pinned to that option. So if we go back to our new construction plan, even though those were new walls, they do not appear because they've been pinned to our option one. So let's go to our option two, and we are going to model once again. This time we're going to pin before we even begin. And so now let's start uh, trying to create some sort of two shape here. That's not too bad, a little top heavy, but we can see that these now should automatically be pinned to option two. Option three, we can see that we're now clear. We're still pinned in this case, so we can continue kind of building this up. Let's see about a three. That's not too bad. And now we can just simply go through these different options. And so these are off to the side now. They're not part of our normal new construction plans or our plan status, but they are now built into their own options. So a uh, pretty useful way of uh, using this renovation tool for showing these different variations. Obviously, this is a very kind of simple example here. But once you go through and you determine which option you want to actually build the rest of your project with, you can then just select these elements and unpin them and that will become our new option for our new construction plan. So we're also going to see that part of our new construction when we toggle these other option one or option two. So at some point here it may just be worthwhile to kind of get rid of your other options or just don't go to those view uh, renovation filters, uh, obviously, when you're only focused on your new construction. So just wanted to point that out. All right. Well, that is pretty much it here for this workflow that I wanted to demonstrate. Uh, very easy to use this. And hopefully you can find some benefit of using this in your own workflow. So the beauty, obviously, is we don't need to have any uh, extra layer combinations or even extra layers to assign these different options to. We can do all of this within the renovation filter. We don't need to copy elements off to the side and build different options off to the side. We can just uh, set them to this specific renovation filter and that can do the trick. So, all right, option three one's out today. So that's our new construction. Um, let me know if you have any questions on this workflow at all. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, way of applying elements to these different phases. Uh, as I mentioned, you can also do additional types of plans uh, for like, say, temporary construction logistics plans and pin logistics elements just to those uh, would be a, another way of using this for a little different purpose. But okay, that's it for today. We will catch you on another video here very soon. Thanks for watching.